Hi and welcome back to Like Maria. I've got another poem of the decade for you today. So this will be useful for Edexcel Pearson A-Level English Literature. And it's Helen Dunmore's poem, To My Nine-Year-Old Self. So, Helen Dunmore, To My Nine-Year-Old Self. I'm going to start at the end of this poem. I know that's an unusual way to start analysing, but I think it's really important here. The last three lines. I leave you in an ecstasy of concentration, slowly peeling a ripe scab from your knee to taste it on your tongue. Now that's quite an unpleasant image, isn't it? And the reason I've started with it is because I think this summarises the whole poem. What the voice in the poem is doing here really is peeling a ripe scab from herself and tasting it on her tongue. By writing the poem, it's as if she's delving into a wound that has semi-healed, pulling the top off and indulging in tasting it again. And I think that's a really useful way to explore this poem. So let's now pop right back to the start. You must forgive me, don't look so surprised. Straight away here, we have an assertiveness and an expectation that there is an audience. So not just the reader, we are listening to someone talking to an audience. And in this case, it's the voice in the poem talking to the nine-year-old child. And she recognises in this first stanza that the youth will probably not be that bothered about listening to the voice of experience. And this is a universal notion, isn't it? That young people are not going to be listening. She then has a confessional tone. I have spoiled this body we once shared. Look at the scars and watch the way I move. Careful of a bad back or a bruised foot. So here she's confessing and owning up to the fact that she has put experience onto that fresh body of youth and she has corrupted it somewhere. She has spoiled it. She places herself back in the imagined world of her youth. Do you remember? She's trying to conjure up these memories. So she's desperate here. This voice in the poem is desperate to rejoin youth, to go back to youth and feel the exhilaration and the experience of youth. She talks about the dream we had. No doubt it's fresh in your mind. And this is very poignant and very sad. An older woman reflecting back on the dream that they had that seems to have been crushed. And what was the dream full of? It was full of ideas, a blank paper to write it on. It was to do with nature, sherbet lemons, that summer of ambition, the ice lolly, all those sweet, and some people might say sickly sweet things, too sugary, too full of the jovial innocence of youth. But notice in there, there is an undermining notion of the wasp trap. And also we have the men in cars after girl children. On the one hand, there is a portrayal of the idealistic sugary freedom of youth. On the other hand, there is something a little sinister started off by the notion of the wasp trap compounded by these men in cars after girls. There is something a little bit unsavoury, untoward that is lurking in wait. And this clearly is the experience of the adult world and the idea that the innocence of youth will not last. The innocence of youth here is also characterised by the movement of lunging over the water on a rope that swings from the tree. A little bit dangerous, lunging into things, jumping into things, this exuberance and excitement and ambition. But she stops short. I shan't cloud your morning. God knows I have fears enough for both. So she, as the voice of experience, is wanting to go back and let the young child live her best life. She doesn't want to interfere, but she almost can't help herself. 
So moving back to this idea of this scab in an ecstasy of concentration, this is a poet here who is really picking over the things that have made her life. And she is ruining the fact that the body is spoiled. But the one thing she doesn't do that experienced people often do to young people is give advice. She's simply describing it in this dramatic monologue in which the implied listener is the young girl. And she's indulging herself in pondering through her life. So I think this is a really interesting poem in terms of what one does when one gets older. One may have regrets, but here there is no regret necessarily foregrounded. There is no advice to the younger self. It's not one of those poems about what you would tell your younger self. It's merely a description of what had happened. And the poignant notion that now this woman feels so very different from that younger self. I'd like to say that we could be friends, but the truth is we have nothing in common beyond a few shared years. And that's the blunt truth. I think this is a very even toned poem. It's not excited. It's not depressed. It's merely matter of a fact. But I think there is an indulgence here in that little frisson that you might get when you pick a scab and feel the saltiness on your tongue. So I hope that's prompted you with some thoughts about Helen Dunmore's To My Nine Year Old Self. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time for another poem of the decade.